Sorry about that. After the cut sweat, I had some things that were unplugged and well, they had to get plugged back in. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by Underdog Fantasy. Code Mayo, Underdog Fantasy right now. Get yourself a deposit bonus of up to 250 bucks. And head underneath that draft section right now. You'll see the PME Cup, which is a draft for all of the FedEx Cup playoffs. $25 to play, 10 max, and it has incredibly pl- flat payouts. It's a great contest. We're going to be doing some streams about it in the upcoming weeks, but you might want to get in now before it fills because there's fewer than 900 spots in it, so I'd recommend that you get in at the moment if you want to play in it. Code Mayo, Underdog Fantasy. Jeff Feinberg on the line with me to talk about the Open, to talk about the CUDA and all the bets for the 3M Open. Is it weird that Xander winning the, in the fashion that he did is exactly like how we always thought that he was going to win a major, not how he won at the PGA Championship? Yeah, that's probably a really fair um, take on it. I would say, you know, in hindsight, it's so easy to acknowledge like how maybe obvious of a pick he was considering you know, even seeing, um, you know, shout out, a lot of people were on him, but um, just seeing someone post their write up about Xander and why they were picking him, Matt Gannon was like, there's just so many questions on this golf course. And like, who can get a B plus on any test that golf shows them? Like, it's Xander Shoffley. He's like, his floor is like a B minus, his ceiling is A plus. He was exquisite. Everyone else seemed to make a number. Some of them fought back from it. Most didn't. He never really did. He just was steady for three and a half rounds. And then he, boom, he made that birdie on 11. No one made a birdie on 11 all day. It was fucking magical. It was sort of like the Sergio plan that we always put in place. Like, hey, can we get him in the fourth to last group? Go put out a number less pressure than playing in the final group and being a favorite because having Scotty on the course at the same time, it just felt like there was no attention on Xander until he was just up by three. Sorry about that. After the cut sweat, I had some things that were unplugged and I had to get plugged back in (laughs) or they would have died in the show. And that would have been worse than me getting up for three seconds and smashing my foot. Yeah, Scotty always takes the attention, even from a betting perspective. He suffocates a lot of, like, the natural thought of who is going to win. Pat, did you see the stat from Sunday? I mean, there was a lot of stats from Sunday. Can you enlighten me? I'll ask it to you. And if you have the answer, remit. But I can't wait to tell it to you if you don't. Do you know what his longest par putt was yesterday? Oh, geez. Five feet? Two feet, 10 inches. It's not great. It's incredible. Yeah, you're right. This And, you know, once you win multiple majors, like obviously when Xander wins at Valhalla at 21 and everyone's like, it was bullshit. It was so easy. That's not my PGA championship. That's not a major. But when you can stack up majors... That sort of win just goes as, like, part of how good you are, if that makes any sense. Like, guys with multiple majors, we don't really, like, look at Brooks at Aaron Hill and, like, mock what the course was now that he's won five majors. You know what I mean? I know. I completely completely understand what you're saying. And I think that even if Xander hadn't won the Open that a year and a half from now would be like, oh, yeah, Xander, Xander's a major winner. Like, it, it's a very in-the-moment type of thing because you know, once you get past the next PGA Championship, you kind of forget one. You kind of forget about the one that happened the time before. Now, not to, like, skip over the Open for a second, but I have more of, I don't know if ex- existential is the right word. Has there ever been a player... And the only player I can honestly think of, Pat, is Ricky Fowler. And maybe that is unfair because you could argue maybe he was just simply overrated. But in our era, you know, before us, you know, Monty, Westwood for sure. Maybe you could argue Luke Donald because he was number one in the world. In our era of podcasting, 
everyone we thought would eventually answer the bell has absolutely answered the bell. Anyone that went off at those at multiple majors, you know, at 20 or under that couldn't get it done. Eventually they've all got it done. I could not think of a single player who we are kind of still waiting for. You know, Kitley is kind of in a no man's land. I don't know that I'd ever put him into that category of like day and Dustin where like, you just knew you just like knew like, sure. It's taking them longer, but like you literally would have been absolutely floored if they never did. And it seems like in this era that we've been doing the podcast, everyone is in some way answered the bell, at least at some point. It is. Cantley is the answer based on your criteria of guys that have opened at 14 to one or 18 to one at a major. And people have actively bet on them thinking this is going to be the time. And it just turned out to be Xander way more so than Cantley. But yeah, he is in that no man's land right now. He is, I guess you just bet Patrick Cantley at every single major going forward. Now that's the answer. Well, I mean, at least that, like in this year, post out of Augusta, right? You were getting Cantley like north of you know fifty to one. Um, so I don't even know. Like z- the other guys we're talking about never drifted. Like maybe a slight drift. You know, maybe there was a point last year there was a major. I think we might have clipped a Xander twenty eight or something. And like so many of you, the amount of graveyard Xander to win a major tickets between like eighteen and twenty two to one that I could probably find over the last five years, including Augusta this year, only to get off after Augusta this year. Like, it takes effort to be this good. It takes effort. And I'm happy to deliver. But, I mean, it was... I have to own that I, I, as I said on the Cut Sweat Show, I had a weekend up north, got to visit my daughter, who's been at overnight camp since the end of June, and then we stayed at a friend's place up north at bad internet. I didn't see a shot all of Saturday. I had friends tell me it was the most exciting round of major golf. One of the most exciting rounds of major golf they've ever seen. This is a guy that like loves when courses beat the shit out of people. But I was really sad to have missed that because I love that. And Troon in some ways, you almost wish... Like, I know because we don't get it often, so it feels more special. But in some ways, you wish the PGA Tour could play it's, could play over there, you know? I love the tweets this weekend that made jokes of how inferior, like, American, how watching Troon must make Americans feel so inferior, A, because of how, like, great the golf courses are over there and the fact that they have, like, a functioning railway system. <laughs> it's... Strange, because there are excellent courses all around North America where you wouldn't get the, exactly the same vibe as that you would get at a Troon or some of these open rota courses. But it's just the courses that the PGA chooses to play on a weekly basis are just so similar. I think that is what the big distinction is. You probably hit that rather quickly. Um, like, like think, think about this year, at like um, even the Canadian Open at Hamilton. Like that... It was more in line with a PGA course, but it felt like slightly off and it was fun to watch. But whenever the Canadian Open was held at Glen Abbey, it's like, yeah, this is might as well be TPC Twin Cities. And I think so much of it is, you know, they have to host these events and they're just comfortable with the properties that can facilitate all the logistics of of hosting an event, including somewhere that the people can actually get to. Yeah, and like people are gonna people are gonna show up for the open regardless. And getting around, listen, like I know it's not quick to get from like London up to Scotland. I'm sure it's difficult, but it's a lot less difficult than traveling from Delaware to Southern California. Yeah, I mean, like I know you mentioned the Canadian Open, and that's a hyper focus of ours. Like I have no idea. Like there's certainly no way of public transit getting to where it's gonna be in the next over the next few years. Right. Like, um, so it's all shuttle buses and process, but yeah, I don't it just, it almost feels. And obviously like anything, if we got it too much, what we got last week or at the open, we'd probably be jaded, but you watch that and you're like, it's so much better than what we watch every week. There's an element to it. And I would argue from the betting perspective, hyper frustrating, 
draw bias, a lack of wave integrity is notched up exponentially, which can be annoying for betting and DFS, but just, just talking about a golf fan. And before made golf betting podcasts, I was just a golf fan and I'm happily to wear that hat. Um, even as I'm losing money betting on golf, it's clear. It's like, it's so jarring. All that being said, I absolutely, you know, like when you go out for like a seafood dinner and they bring you the stuff to wash your hands and they're even a nice, some Chinese restaurants will like bring you the, the bowl to literally like you'll literally palate cleanse yourself at the table. The 3M open Wait, board. Are, are you eating the wet naps? No, no. They'll like give you like the, they'll bring you like a mint and, and uh, I don't know. Okay. Like, and you, you're just, it's like a whole routine at some of these places, even before and after the meal. I enjoy like open after the major. I, and obviously, I will watch less golf if then it was elevated or something. I don't know how much I'll watch this weekend, but this 3M board, like, it feels so right after a major, way more. It, it's a much better palate cleanser than whatever they've been giving us after other majors recently. Yeah, I think we spoke about this at the Travelers following the U.S. Open, where it was just another elevated event that, you know, we kind of saw this. Now, you know, it's a weaker version of what we just saw at an easier course. At least this just feels like a completely different thing, which I completely agree with you about that. And it's not a bad field whatsoever. It's, this is exactly the type of field that I want after a major championship. I, I have I'm excited to lose money on this ecosystem of the tour. I wish I there were more of my like actual losers here so I could have some decisions made for me. But I had fun staring this sucker down this morning. I was I'm excited to talk about it. Well, additionally, back to the open for a second, I think a lot of just people's positive reviews of the tournament had to do with that Saturday that you talked about when the wind came, the rain came, it became, it wasn't unplayable. It was just incredibly difficult. Everyone talking about how the back nine was simply the toughest nine holes that they had ever played from Rom to Dustin to Scotty. Didn't matter who it was that it was a real test. Now, if we don't get that and we don't get all the wind the first two days and it's uh, we've had open championships like that before where the wind doesn't show up and you basically get Aaron Hills. People are like, ah, oh, the open championship's stupid. It's the easiest thing on earth. So it's really hard to please people all the time. So I think the whole thing is when we get all the elements that we want and the visuals that we want, the competition that we want, just enjoy it. Like I got absolutely wiped out on the open. Uh, apparently I bet all the guys in the wrong wave. You know, that happens. I seem to... Well, whoever I bet on at the Open Championship, just go to the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of tee times, because those guys are going to have the easier ones. But I, I lost all my money. I don't really care about t wave integrity in that way. It's just, it's something fun to watch. And it's different, like you said, that I don't mind it once a year. But if it was every three weeks, then it would lose its appeal. But once a year, sometimes it just doesn't feel enough. But at the same time, like you can't fake recreate the open, like even the Scottish open, like you just can't fake. You just can't fake recreate it. Although the PGA tour loves to like fake recreate lots of things, um, you know, and wrap it up and tell us it's Christmas. That, that, uh, that being said, as a golf fan, I do feel like we're way bigger apologists when the scoring gets insane at the open championship, we acknowledge the weather place. Like a lot of golf fans have no acceptance for easy scoring U S opens. Like there's just, that's a line like that doesn't matter what the weather is. It is unacceptable to them, but we always acknowledge like, you know, if that wind is down some of these courses, they'll just get absolutely dummied. Sure. I, I can't remember. Like, what was the, in our lifetime, what's been the easiest U.S. Open? Aaron Hills and nothing has been even close to it? Yeah, you're probably right. But I just, last year, people were, were freaking out at, what, Ricky shooting seven under or something in the first round? And, and Xander, yeah, LA. the first round at L.A. Country Club was incredibly easy. And then the other three rounds were really hard. Yeah, what was the, remind me again, What do you remember what the winning score was at L.A.? I think it was 10. Wyndham Clark won at 10 or 9. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable considering the opening round was 7. Like, they, they obviously got that course to, to hold on. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Nothing but lovely. It's great. Xander, worthy champion. It just and it and it just, you know, hold on. Those narratives, they're all meant to be flipped, especially in golf. They play four of these goddamn suckers a year. Football, God willing, your guy can change the narrative around him. It's harder. There's only one Super Bowl. You know, we all have a guy who isn't Mahomes, and, and God willing, they can find their time. But as far as I can tell, in this modern era of golf, Pat, no one didn't meet the moment. No one no one has met the moment. Sergio went to the border. He met the moment. The What's crazy to think, actually, is, is in some ways it's like Rory 2.0 is like the guy is like the guy with the most on his back, which is so funny. And we've spoken about that obvious, but it just seems like in the last decade, it's in some ways Rory is starting with zero majors. Yeah. If you reset his clock a decade ago, you're absolutely right. He ends up being the guy and uh, it almost seems inevitable for him too. And everyone, I mean, especially after this weekend, just to, what, what's up with Tim's like whole anti Rory thing. I mean, it makes no sense to me. I'm not really sure and a lot of it stems back he is trying to diminish Rory's season and use it to prop up Rom's season even for Tim is fucking wild <laughs> it's wild um and what happened to Rory this week again incredibly polarizing everything that happens with Rory is polarizing in some ways to paraphrase he acknowledges he might have kind of quit on himself realizing the cut was out of reach but everyone wants to see him like go full Max Cohoma and like hit a putt on the last for the number and show how much he cares. Well, there was a, I I think that people didn't realize, cause I I saw that whole thing on Friday as well. After we had finished the show, you know, Max was grinding. Bobby Mack was grinding. Like Rory was out of it. Like there was no chance he was getting to the cut. Like what what are they going to, what do they want him to do? Shoot 58. Like what's Rory's going to win a gold medal. And then we're going to be like, we're, we're going to have one of those, like, how do we quantify this, right? Sort of. I mean, people were talking about Justin Rose as a Hall of Famer, and there's, like, actual criteria to get into the World Golf Hall of Fame that I think it's either 15 worldwide wins and two majors, or it's 15 wild, worldwide wins or two majors, or 15 plus one, that they don't really know how to count the gold medal in it because he obviously he's the gold medalist from Rio in 2016. But I, I mean, by, I think by any clear definition that Justin Rose would be a Hall of Famer in terms of golf, even if he didn't meet the specific criteria, that you would think of him that way, wouldn't you? Yeah, I certainly would. And I think it's crazy. If you made the previous season's Ryder Cup, you should be exempt into the Open. Like, if you're on Team Europe in the previous year, you should be exempt into the open. In fact, he had to qualify as wild, but hey, you, you just even them replaying the the comments he made after his qualifying day. It's just beautiful. What a what a lad. Uh, what a, he outside of Xander, no one played better golf start to finish and he might have even had the harder wave thursday friday and was just beautiful yeah rose rose came out of we were talking about it on the cut sweat show that it felt like no one was playing better than rose in like everyone else was getting themselves into trouble rose just hit it to 25 feet every time and tried to two putt which he did then he started making some of them moving up the leaderboard i like that xander went out and won too like i don't think we're gonna really because it all happened so quickly and he just kind of came up and then there was no challengers all of a sudden he was just way above everyone else that back nine at Troon is one of the better back nines in a major championship ever his entire day all things considering about the week was just one of the better championship rounds when you consider <clears throat> like since I don't know the exact number, but Justin Ray tweeted. Yeah. You know, maybe it lacks some levels of star power, but the amount of bodies that were stacked up there going into a Sunday within a shot were more than I feel like we've had in, in 80 or 90 years. Um, truly dominant. You could think, you know, for moments, your guy got unlucky. Your guy did this, did that, you know, fine lines. There is no fine line. There's oftentimes major championships where I feel there's probably or in any golf tournament, really. You know, there's a handful of guys who could sit in the locker room and pinpoint the moment, 
you know, and if not for this moment or thing, they'd be the champion. No, no one, no one can lay claim to that, in my opinion. I, not I think, even Rose. I think not even Billy. There's one guy I think that can lay claim to that is Russell what, Henley. Shane? No, it's Russell Henley. Russell Henley, if he had just made a putt on Sunday, I he was putting for birdie on every hole, every hole. Okay, maybe, maybe like, like fair. He, he played the Xander round, just didn't make anything. And you got to make some because eventually they're going to come for them, except Xander. You know, he never had to relinquish. Um, Sam Burns and Justin Thomas felt like they played very similar golf tournaments, which was kind of funny. Um, like a lot of parallels, at least like in my perception of how their weeks went. Maybe Tiger needs to. Re never mind. That's a mean thing to say. Tiger what? Tiger needs to retire, just like everyone else who finished. Cam Smith needs to retire. Nope. Wyndham Clark needs to retire. Rory needs to retire. Tiger needs nope. to retire. They're all uncompetitive at the Open. You got to retire. Okay, now you're forcing me to say the thing I didn't want to say. It's got nothing to do with Tiger retiring. He said it best. He's earned that, right? He's earned that. He could tee it up there as long as he's allowed. I got no issues for it. Justin Thomas hit that first shot <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> And I literally said to myself, I cannot believe Tiger Woods is friends with this guy. <laughs> that That's what I wanted to say. But friendship is about more than what you do on the first tee on a mid-major championship Sunday. But he hit that ball, and my first thought is, like, Tiger needs to reevaluate the friendship here. Like, maybe it is just a babysitter. I am not sure it's really funny just this like skewed perspective people have on Justin Thomas now they're like oh what a choker like I can't win anything like dude has two majors and he's playing almost exactly in majors like he kind of always did I remember his Aaron Hills I think he shot the 63 on the Saturday to get himself in contention he just didn't have it on Sunday but what was he this week he was like 67 78 68 78 or something like you, you see these two rounds that are amongst the best in the field and then he just can't hold on the other days but the day the right like the tournaments and it doesn't matter what tournament it is it could be the rocket mortgage it could be a major you know it's in there and that always makes him kind of terrifying that's why people are so quick to jump back on and see value in justin thomas and i mean i, I know paul bet him this week i think at 90 to 1 i jumped in yeah. on saturday at 90 to 1 just thinking about it like he's gonna be like four strokes back of the lead going into sunday if you told me someone shoots a 63 today it's probably justin thomas now he might shoot 80 but he just has that in him where he can go either way. He can be the best guy on the course in any given round, and he does it more often than not. And it's usually the first round that people declare him the winner. Everything you said there is true, and when you're betting a guy that late and you know someone's got to make a run, it's like, you know, there's so few guys you actually believe could shoot that 62, 63. He's one of them. I'd only fight back on one thing, and maybe it's just minor and semantics. I actually don't think the reason... Um, I don't think it's like a choker label. Now, maybe like it's just uh, synonyms of choker, but, you know, flaky and there's like an arrogant and you got to be arrogant, but he just seems fragile in some ways. He just goes from arrogant to fragile so quickly in some respects. Um, and a lot of like hot. I'm not even talking about the hot mic incident. I'm talking about more or less offensive, subtle hot mic stuff or Netflix stuff has really just not had him look like a guy people want to just root for if they're given a choice of like rooting for him or this other lad out there. Uh, but I don't think choker is it because even as someone that likes to throw stones, I do it like you, like I see that 63 is always in there and he gets off those starts. I'm like, Oh shit, he's going to do it. Um, I don't like tweet it like he won, like a lot of people seem to do on Thursdays with him. That's a bad habit. People should drop that. But uh, I don't think choker is why there's been a, a turn. That being said, he hasn't really contended a ton at all since the win either, right? Like, has he gotten in many fights? And by fights, I mean, like, you know, gotten to the line near the line much at all in this long drought? I don't, I can't recall anything to tell you the truth. So that's true. also weird. Um, but I'm sure we're forgetting something. I, I have no doubts we're forgetting. Well, he was in the, uh, the, when he lost to Nick Dunlap at the American Express. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As did Sam Burns. Um,
I don't know what I didn't I didn't really I didn't see a shot from you know Saturday morning through yesterday at 10 so I don't really feel like I have a ton to speak on things well who were you rooting for yesterday because I obviously our bets were all dead we didn't have anyone up there who was the name that you looked at and said hey I hope that guy wins was it Rose? Uh, I was actually rooting for Thirsty Lawrence because before I lost connections on Saturday, he was off to a hot start. I put 10 bucks on him to win $10,000 <laughs> at a thousand to one. There wasn't even for a moment on Sunday. I felt it was possible either. If the site had a cash out button, I probably would have would have taken it. So that aside, um, I was just cheering. I wasn't cheering for Lowry. I wasn't. I was annoyed. He hit a sixty-foot putt, uh, but Billy, Zan, like all of them, all of them. And when Xander rose to the moment, when he birdied eleven, like it was over, over. The man who birdies eleven is the man who deserves to win. And what happened after he birdied eleven? Clearly, that shot catapulted everything. In my opinion, that came after it. It was an easy rooting board, other than Lowry. The chutzpah on this guy, like he can yell at a fan and then like apologize after I had to yell at someone. And I, again, I didn't see much from Sunday, but got to see the clip of him yelling at a fan on Saturday or someone who prevented a ball from like going in a bush. Fuck this guy. He really annoys me. He really annoys me. Someone described him as Tyrrell Hatton with a better PR team. Yes, but Hatton, I think it's turning. As but, Lowry, the I, thing were, about were, these were, guys... We're used to it with Hatton, so you expect it from Hatton. No one really felt like bad vibes from Shane Lowry. He just seemed like a drunk Irishman who was a real good dude. And then you see him get very surly, and you're like, oh, what's this? Okay, you're right. But when you hear other players talk about Hatton and playing with Hatton... Um, you're right, and maybe I guess finally contending at a... You're right, people, it's not the same. It's actually not the same. Hatton has a way worse PR team. You're, you're right. You're right. Lowry also is a major. So I think it, it, it um, you know, it sort of puts a shield on, on some of that stuff a bit. You know, you're not as low-hanging fruit in some respects, but Buddy needs an adjustment. I was really digging seeing Thirsty Lawrence at the top, and I was very much not digging not having money on him. <laughs> not that I was going to bet him at a major, but just having bet him so many times and won with him on the DP World Tour. It was fun to see him get into the mix. I was like actively rooting for Billy Horschel to win. And I'm not really a Billy Horschel guy, but I just kind of want to see him win a major. And this was like the only chance he's ever had to win one. I mean, that would have been lovely. Nice, Billy, car nice the, cardigan, too. You know me. I'm always a sucker for a cardi. Um, Billy's CV, like, it almost felt like the Open would fit his big game hunting CV. He mm -hmm. won a subfield earlier this year, right? Which is so out of character. Because um, everything else is just, like, big, big boy pants. Like, every trophy he has is big boy pants. Yeah, he has, he has the match play. He has a FedEx Cup. He has Wentworth. He has Memorial. And then this really would have been a good kicker for him. Yeah. And the, what, what did he win this year again? I forget. What he, was it? He won Port, one of the Puerto Ricos or something. Yeah, it was Corrales or Puerto Rico. I think it was Corrales. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe he's. Uh, well, he, I won't be touching him, but you could argue he could be sets up nice for this week. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to touch any of the guys. We'll get to that when we get to the 3M in a second. I don't know how much I want to touch the guys who were in contention and like really went through a grind, be it Sam Burns. I mean, Sam Burns was ejected himself pretty quickly on Sunday, or yeah, I guess Horschel would be the other one. I guess, And I guess Thirsty Lawrence got himself into the field too because now he has special temporary membership on the PGA Tour. So we'll see him here, and then we'll see him at Wyndham, I'm guessing. I'm going to be at Wyndham. By the way, in Greensboro, if anyone from Greensboro is around, I'm going to get there a day early. I might want to play golf on Friday if anyone uh, you know is a member of a club around is that there. Like business or pleasure? Business. Golf business. Golf business for me, yeah. 
And I like the Sounds window. Exciting. It seems, seems like, yeah, it could be very exciting. We'll see how it turns out. But I get in Thursday night, and I'm going to go on Saturday and Sunday. So I figured I'd kick around Greensboro on Friday, maybe try to play some golf. But I don't know anyone in Greensboro. Do you? I don't. Know. I, don't. I have no. I have no friends. I have no friends in Green. Actually, you know what? I might, but I don't know if he's going to be in Greensboro. Is it because um, he doesn't live in Greensboro? Well, I know he's like kind of from the region. I don't know where he's from, and he's kind of all over the map because he that works for Monster Energy and NASCAR and like the professional bull riding. Well, if he works for NASCAR, that's in Charlotte. Because I remember when I went to Charlotte, there was the NASCAR Hall of Fame there. So I assume it's there. I'm going to a NASCAR race in August in Michigan. Cool. I've never done it before. I'm actually really excited. I, I would, I have no idea. Is that, is uh, people, there's like hundreds of thousands of people that seemingly go to these things. I assume it's a great spectator sport. Yes. And like the person I was just referencing is also like, um, hooking a bit of a, um, behind the scenes experience. So, uh, should be good. Yeah, not, should be good. It's who, you know, right? Yeah, no, I don't, I mean, I don't know comfortable name dropping, but like some people, like Kenny rode in a pace car once through really? this guy. Really? If you remember years ago at a Virginia race. Yeah, if Kenny tweeted, he's like freaking out in the pace car. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm do not. Well, yeah, I'm no plans on getting in a pace car, but, but yeah, um, good times. I'm actually really excited for it. Might be the first leg of the FedEx Cup. I don't know. Well, overshadowed by. Xander winning the Open, and then Joe Biden dropping out of the presidential race was Nick Dunlap getting his second win of the Nikki, year. Nikki, Nikki D. D, baby, <laughs> out, of, out, out of the clouds, all, all the leaders just you know, not surprising at a tournament where no one really great is playing, or if the great players are there, they're so young they're not great yet that people are just working through the motions and not being able to contend on a Sunday. My poor guy, Rico Hui, <laughs> guy can't buy a win, man. It was fucking huge. You make an eagle, like, because they do have eagle opportunities, and it's just about making the eagle the five points late. Someone always makes it, it seems, which which really does change everything. Pat, like, Nikki D, freaking awesome. It's everyone on him, 40 to 1, even some 50s, down to 30, um, like a true bonanza. The golf tips checker guy joked that he didn't, he didn't keep, reference on on um he didn't keep reference on the cuda but it might have been one of like the biggest community crashes out there and oh this is what i want to say last year uh rogers melted on that back nine he melted Bacia came through with the win this year he goes to the back nine he birdied seven of of nine front nine holes Okay, as we know, the Cuda is set up for a party on the back. I think he got one par five birdie on the back. Patrick like, Rogers, uh, yes, how does he, he do he, that? He birdied, he birdied 15 and made two bogeys. How, yeah, 15. It's, I, I bet you his approach into 15 was under like 170 yards. Like, you don't birdie 15, you're the true biggest dud out there. But the fact that he can play those that the that back nine two years in a row while either like leading or tied for the lead is mind boggling. Uh, like what a holy shit! You almost feel for the guy. Almost, well, uh, almost, I, Nikki D, baby. I, I got a tweet from Matt Wyatt who we gave a special shout out to on this show last year for hitting the Cuda open double with Harmon and Batia. Uh, this year he did it again. He had he had Xander and Nikki D. That's incredible. He has like more wins Fucking in one right. weekend than I do all year. Matt's yeah, Matt's a loyal listener. Yeah, good, good for you, dude. I, I gave Matt Gannon a shout earlier in the show for hitting Xander. He hit Xander. He hit Nikki D. He hit Ben Silverman FRL Cuda. And hear this: he almost had the fucking grand slam. He had Shane Lowry. FRL open and and one of the worst beats with the damn brown like going Xander on the back nine on Thursday. So that was like unbelievable. Um but yeah, I think Dunlop 
Dunlop, Dunlop gave a gave, gave, bailed out bailed out plenty. I think this weekend bailed out plenty of Open Championship championship beatings. Shout out Sungjae for battling. You know, a little placement ladder. Norin for battling. You know, brought home some prop sprinkles, but just took a fucking like honestly like like you know we're older than a lot of the kids now pat but like just you know the beating took it's like you know back in the day when dads could bring out the belt you know <laughs> took a beating took a beating i i Open can I, I can assure you i'm still young enough that my parents didn't beat me with a belt when i was younger well my dad's 80 <laughs> oh that's fair my dad's like 57 Okay, there. So there was a no, it wasn't like a full on. There was just some you got a strap, and sometimes you got a piece of the buckle. Did, did, did not you, you got the switch? You didn't realize your dad was Adrian Peterson. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Yeah, Adrian, Adrian was too young for pulling that, but um, oh, yeah, whatever. You know what, though? It's like you see, like you took a beating vibrant right now you know what it is patrick it's it's truly the last major of the year is the final opportunity to take the beating at least for me for me you know i'm not i'll be betting golf i'll be certainly exposed to these tournaments when fedex cup can fuck off no I mean, yeah, you, yeah you have to draft your underdog team for the fedex cup jeff code mayo underdog i already did i was in buffalo uh i already got in a couple who'd you get um, in who'd you get late Pardon? Who were the guys that you were targeting late? A bunch of a bunch of uh, straight goobers. I might have really screwed up, Pat. I wasn't like cross referencing any list. I'm embarrassed. (laughs) If I could log in right now, I'm in Canada, so it makes it annoying. I'll show off my ownership. I'm not proud. I made a donation, but I want some placing monies in your other in the in the majors tournament like from winning, like in the first couple segments. So I had some money to burn and truth be told after the drafts, I really wish I just burned it on football, but to go full circle, the open championship, the end of the last major, like I'm going to lose bets. We got a month and a half to lose more bets, not denying that, but I'm not losing my shirt again till week one. And that feels good. Oh, that's like a nice feeling. I'm excited to lose money at Tommy Fleetwood next week in Paris. Yeah, Fleetwood, Connors, um, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, sure. We I'm excited for the Olympics. I was more I thought I'd be more excited. The field, you know, it's like a it's fun. It's a crossover, but it's like a live super field in some respects. Because there's like way more bigger names, but the back end still feels like you're watching like a live event, if that makes any sense. Yeah, but last I, I guess the the course in Japan last time was a little bit different because remember uh, Sabatini ended up coming in second. CT Pan got a medal for coming in third for Chinese Taipei or Taiwan or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, but you can see these guys kind of pop up, and I think we got the right course this time around. I mean, Le Golf National is a if they trick it out is a very tough course. It'll be interesting to see the level of trick they um, plan on putting it, putting on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm actually quite okay. Next week's Olympics, and then Wyndham, and then FedEx Cup. Sure, I'll I, whatever, whatever. Those those Kamala to be the nominee tickets. They'll cash bigly. We'll cover August, no problem. <laughs> August is covered, and then in September, Pat. All guess what, DraftKings? Guess what? Jim Harbaugh hasn't died yet. So instead of waiting for week one to pay me out on him to be the coach of the Chargers, like you demand on doing, you know, you're waiting all summer for him to die, to get arrested, to get caught up in some controversy. No, 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 no. Also, Bill Belichick not to coach a team seven to one. All these things, when you're getting killed in golf, you're just looking for where those drips are coming to save you. So I need the drips to come. Save me. But Let- Harbaugh alive, DraftKings hoping he dies. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Supercharger, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. 
With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Everyone who tunes into the Pat Mayo Experience knows from time to time I like to talk to you about some health supplements that I end up taking. And I've been doing Timelines Mito Pure now for about a month. Feel great? And I think you can too. Take two soft gels a day for two months and you can see significant improvements in your cellular energy, your muscle strength, and your endurance. That was the big thing. I've been golfing more this summer and lifting less. Yet when I go back to the gym for my once a week like max lift, I am not really atrophying that much. I'm not losing a ton of muscle, which is absolutely fantastic news for me and my golf game because you know if you work out too much then you get too sore sore you get too stiff you need to retain that flexibility i'm retaining my muscle mass at the same time although i'm not working out as much and it comes in two product designs to fit your needs they're berry powder which is great to mix into your breakfast yogurt or daily smoothie that's how i've been doing it i've been eating some strawberries raspberries blackberries with a little bit of yogurt a little bit of protein powder then boom timelines meet up pure right on top of that or they have soft gels for the days where you're just on the run and wanted something to convenient to grab and go so timeline is offering 10 percent off your first order of Mito Pure right now. So go to timeline.com slash mayo to get that 10% off. All right? Few more touch points before the 3M. How would you rank the majors this year? Okay, PGA last, right? Default, agreed? Uh, I mean, the Masters wasn't that fun this year. Yes, you're right. Because the PGA, I had a Bryson ticket. Yeah, we took like, that late into it. Like, if you talk yeah, about the quality of golf, like, was it competitive? Was it non-competitive? Was the course too easy? Yeah, the course ended up being too easy. There was a ton of rain, and the greens were super receptive. But it was still a fun Sunday. There was a bunch of guys who could have won. And we got a 1v1 down the stretch, including Bryson. I would, I would wait. I would, I would go... US, US Open, opens first. U.S. Open, Open Championship, PGA, and the Masters. The Masters always has the cachet because it's the Masters. We wait eight months for a major championship to see everyone play together. There's like a certain floor that it always has. But we it, we got to, what was it? When did everyone go in the water all at the same time and then Scotty just won? Like a whole eight, whole nine, something like that? Yeah, Ludwig went in at 11, right? The, the, with the green, the water left of the green was at 11. Yeah, and then it was just over. Yeah, it just oh, it was just over. You're not wrong. Um, I actually can't argue with that because you make the point of like you know drama down the finish. That U.S. Open was fucking crack, and like the Bryson stuff, and you know it had it literally everything. It had everything. It's actually U.S. Open definitive gap. As good as like the weekend at Troon was, as someone who didn't even watch it, it's still. U.S. Open definitive gap because Pinehurst certainly delivered and then how it, how it worked out, I think, delivered. Um, and this isn't – do you have an opinion on the player of the year thing? Well, that was the other thing I was going to bring up. Yeah, I think Scheffler's the player of the year. Yeah, Xander has the two majors, and he was second at the Players' Championship. I think he has the top ten at all majors. If he wins the FedEx Cup, I think that you probably do give it to him. But Scheffler has, what, six wins, a major, the players, and has just been absolutely dominant all year. Like he, I, There's not a single person out there, whether you want to give the player of the year to Xander or Scotty, if you said, who has played better this year, everyone would say Scotty. I was hoping you were going to say Xander so we could like have a fun argument, but we're not going to fake it. It's, I think it's hyperbole in the moment to say Xander deserves it. I don't, I mean, majors, yes, they're everything, but there's a totality to the full body and the events that includes all those big boy events you mentioned. So I do lean Scotty. I think, I don't know if the Olympics is like supposed to count by rule. It will. Of like PGA tour, but yeah, you're a voter, you're human. If an American be it Xander or Scheffler wins gold medal, it will be like very important. 
maybe given more importance than it might actually mean, but that's okay. That's fine. There'll be a Supreme weight put on it and the FedEx cup. So it's still open, but I found it really strange how many people were just like, it's Xander's. Now I will acknowledge and I would almost like die on this hill that it's going to be like what you're diminishing Scotty winning the masters. It's hard to say what I'm about to say without you being able to counter it that way. And I don't want to, but you winning at a course you're clearly so comfortable with that works for you that you've already won at. It's incredible. Like I, there's no debate. Like you win five masters. The fifth one doesn't seem like less of an achievement, but to win at like the total variety from Valhalla to Troon is like beyond impressive in its own, in its own way. Like the Troon win seems way more impressive than the masters win, but the player of the year encompasses the whole year, not just the best win of the year. Absolutely. And I think that there is a case, like if Xander can pick up the BMW, then win at Eastlake, and then he has four wins, I think that all of a sudden, then yeah, maybe he is the player of the year. And I think you have a legitimate case for that. But six wins versus two wins, even though the two wins are majors, like are we just saying who played the best in majors? Then that's the player of the year. But that's not how the award has ever been given out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Scotty never got up like five strokes. When we declared tournaments over for Scotty, like, sure, you could have done it facetiously when he's close or charging. But Scotty, like, if Scotty had the lead at the players or at Wells Fargo, like, he's winning those tournaments. Xander didn't. I'm trying to think of, like, what did Scotty gag this year? I can't really think of it. I guess he kind of gagged. He missed the putt versus Jaeger. Yeah. He could have gotten the playoff, but he didn't. And thankfully, he needed the win. You know, um, that's it. That's what he gagged. He gagged a putt in Houston versus Jaeger. And he came second at Colonial. I don't even really remember. Davis Riley won. Davis Riley ran away with it. So I was just surprised at how many people, like, I guess it's in the moment, but how many people honestly are like, no, Xander's player of the year last night. It's, like, oh. it, it, it's, a, it's a debate. It's clearly between those two but I, I would still vote for Scotty right now if I had a vote, which I don't. Would I don't want to. Yeah, I would vote for Scotty. Yeah, and you got, these are awards. They must be debated. To not have them turn into debates, when they may as well not have the awards. Well, the, I mean, it's. The thing is, it's not, the player of the year doesn't mean anything. In golf, winning majors means something. Like, that's the thing that people remember. Xander won two, Scotty won one. Like, you got to get your majors. It's the only thing that matters in golf in terms of legacy, in terms of achievement, in terms of whatever. Remember the Rom versus Cantlay year? What was it two years ago, three years ago? I don't even remember who won it, but I just remember, like, the wrong person won, I think. I think Cantlay beat Rom, and he didn't win a major. Yeah, he just got hot. He won, like, two straight FedEx Cups or something at the end. It's it's a bit of a blur. Uh, maybe a Rory got a player of the year when people thought he shouldn't have because he finished strong. But you're right. It doesn't matter. And if it's about legacy, I mean, Scotty got arrested this year. <laughs> that fucking plays. Like, that plays. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> um, If it's about, like, oh, it's crazy because – it's hard to argue Xander's legacy grew more this year, but Scotty's legacy, like people, even if you disagree with it, the fact that at any time you could make any sort of statistical or, or thread to some tiger stat just shows how fucking nuts the year was, has been for him. So to, to kind of spin it back a little bit, like Scotty won last year, player of the year in the, the only thing that he won was the players, wasn't it? Like in terms of big the... events. Oh yeah, that's he didn't win a major last year. No, and Cantlay did beat Rom in two thousand and twenty-one, <laughs> and he won the FedEx Cup, and Rom won Tory Pines. And I mean, Rom I kind of just did remind you guys, but like, come on, Scotty Scheffler's only won a major on one golf course. So you I was think being sarcastic. You think he sucks? No, 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 no. Um, no, I don't. I don't. It was sad to see him leave the fight though yesterday. But he's capable. Those 
those incidents are still in his range of outcomes. Um, it is what it is. It's it's so funny to think the talk of Scotty after the Masters to be here at the end of the year and he didn't win another major or even funny the talk of Scotty last year and we went the whole year without him winning the major. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My only real thought on Scotty is every is the the odds you could have bet him at Friday night, like plus 350 and on Saturday night plus 350 seemed like way better bets than betting him pre-tournament at five to one well, like I, way better bets I, I think we had this conversation I forget what tournament it was after but I it was the over under mate it was over under majors for Scotty Scheffler I think I set the line at four and a half for his career and people are like it's got to be nine and a half like it is hard to win major championships and I think that people forget that And maybe I was low. Maybe he will definitely eclipse four and a half. That's not the point I'm trying to make. It's just, you know, three months ago, it's like, wow, he's going to win 18. How couldn't he? He wins every event. It's like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't win every event. He doesn't win every major. But it's so funny. I mean, ask that question about Xander today versus five months ago. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> Biggest loser on earth. Now he has two majors. Right. And golf's the best. Like, we turn the guy who finishes third all the time into a loser while glad handing the guys in like 40th and 30th is like on the come up. It's so good. We're like the best. Well, Golf discourse is so fun. Well, this and was what, this was the whole argument with Cuss with Rory versus Rom for this year. It's like I, in no world is Rom having a better year than Rory. Even Rory's non wins and he's won three times are still better than Rom's finishes. It's just it, it's the same thing. And Xander was sort of like the lesser version of this with Rory. It's just when Rory doesn't win, it's in such dramatic fashion because he almost wins. It was the same thing with Xander. Like he had all these top tens. He was in the mix and he just didn't win. So it just makes it feel more devastating over and over and over. And it's fresh in your mind where Brooks, God love him, when he's not in contention and doesn't win, he's like nowhere near the leaderboard. He's like T30. And then no one remembers. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, Pat. People are going to, and listen, it's so great. What makes the discourse of golf so fun and betting guys or not betting guys is needing a reason or needing to convince yourself or needing any reason to not bet them to convince yourself not to bet them. But it's like, okay, Nick Dunlop has two wins. People are going to tell you he's better than players without wins. His wins come at like the Amex and the Cuda, and you're arguing for a guy who like only plays a premier schedule. Like, it's like, okay, like, you know, the, the context of like quantifying things in the world of golf, even more so now with live, you know, to the point of like, what does seventh place mean in live? How do I quantify that as any form? Like that is, that is so much fun. And even if you disagree, you know, I, I, it's fun to, to disagree and, and talk about it. Let's move to the 3M. Like this tournament, I like this course. Apparently, they're growing the rough up a little bit this year to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, I've always called it, you know, if PGA National is like hard course on steroids water course, this is like the minor league version of PGA National. There's just water everywhere. It's a bit of a longer course. And I've seen this take pop up a few times, and I actually happen to agree with it. I mentioned it in the research show. I love the final hole at TPC Twin Cities. It's a gettable par five that also has big bogey and big double bogey potential potential like the the range of outcomes on that hole are absolutely gigantic and it can really swing a tournament it's been a fun tournament fun finishes i you sort of have this thought of like i don't know moments like is it mexico with water in terms of the players i want to play but i think shot makers totally live here as well yeah, and it's funny because you see some of the winners and it just really leans you towards like, oh, of course, like bombers. You have Matthew Wolf and Bryson to dueled it out the very first year. Wolf ends up winning. Even Thompson's a shit house. Fina, nah, no, he's not. And you have Cam Champ ends up winning. You're like, ah, of course, bombers. But it, when you take a look at the rest of the leaderboard, maybe it's because the elite bombers don't show up to play this tournament. It's a lot of like the Hadwins and Ryan Moores and Lee Hodges who ended up winning a year ago. Like just really good, accurate player, like at potential accuracy players, not as big of a bomber, dialed in on approaches and make a ton of putts. Like that's the entire key to this tournament. Like keep yourself dry and then make some putts. And that's what Cam, like nothing was worse. Cause I, had, I think it was Vegas the year that champ ended up winning and someone else in that mix and just champ made everything, everything on Sunday. It was infuriating. 
that was tilting. I've never been the Cam Champ like truther ever. Disagree. Uh, when Cam Champ came out of the scene, you're like basically Tiger Woods. No, Tim might have like told us that one night at Erdman's house, but it wasn't me. Well, who do you want to bet this week at the 3M? Because do you anticipate any of these guys pulling out? Or would that have I don't. Already? Okay. Uh, maybe Sam Burns does. Like, maybe. But I don't think the Eags or, or Baccia will. And Finau seems to have this as a... As all the, a, as all a, those guys missed the cut. I, I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about Rose, Lawrence, Horschel, like those guys, and Burns, who were in it. Hey, yeah, Sunday. Rose might. Rose might burn. Rose, I don't think Thirsty will, but but the the options, I think it's a Burns, Billy, and Justin. Those could be the guys that do. Um, but the flip side of it is if I like, if I could ask a question today, it would almost be like, not who are you betting, but do you have a blind theory as to how you play those guys or anyone? Who does? Because part of me wants to be like, just disregard all of them in some respects. Maybe that's the safe move. But the counter to it is this field. Like, okay, maybe it's not as weak as I'm about to say. But some of these guys, like Sam Burns is so good that no one in this field is beating Sam Burns if Sam Burns plays his best golf. Like not, nobody. Not even the betting favorite? Okay, I meant that's... I sort of meant in like trying to th- worry about getting clipped down down the board. But no, Sam Burns is playing his A game. He's probably not going to lose. I I'm not worried about Fee now. Like if I I I don't even think betting Fee now is out of possibility. I've made two bets in and around 50. So if I needed to, I I I could. I it's a tough one. He loves it here. Uh and he could bully the shit. All these good players could bully the shit out of these guys and that's a fear and i bet fee now last week so you me know, too, maybe me I too. This, <laughs> Good bet. maybe like a, and he was very popular so there's probably just a lot of blind like no fucking way am i doing that again but he he loves it here what did he i'm curious i can see it he won here he played decent he played decent at the open the year he came here and won. Yeah, so. he, he's sort of the he's sort of the guy that I I think the way to judge it is if guys were in contention, not that they're a complete write off, but they will be for me from a betting perspective at the open. Like Finau missed the cut, Thigawa missed the cut, Batia missed the cut. Like they've probably been over here for two days. Like Keegan wasn't because he waited around because he's the Ryder Cup captain to shake Xander's hand and everything. He's in the field this week, but. I, I just think that the the mental anguish of playing through those conditions on Saturday and then contending on a Sunday would just drain you a little bit. And then, you know, you're obligated to come here. Maybe you try to catch the weekend out. We've seen a lot of big players blow up at this course, too. And that's sort of the thing. If you have a mental lapse at this course, you are absolutely cooked. You might shoot 80. I remember betting Dustin one year, and he shot an 80 in the first round here. This is the famous, the first year they were here. I think we all bet EVR at 40, who's ironically still 40 to one here because he was a golden gopher. Yeah. And he hit into the middle of the water. And all he did was drive. hit the water. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't, couldn't do anything. All he could do is hit the ball in the water. Um, So yeah, if you've got the bad feels around here, you, you, you're fucked because survive in advance is not possible. You have to score to stay in the fight. Or you're just, you know, you're you're middling for for a top thirty five or something. So the the top of the betting board has Finau as the overwhelming favorite. Obviously, he's won here before. He came third the year that Michael Thompson ended up winning. So he's eleven to one. Burns is eighteen. The Gal is twenty two. Bati is twenty eight. Clanton's twenty eight. Mitchell and Hoagie are both thirty three. Horschel's thirty five. Then you have J T. Poston. Keegan Bradley, they're both 40 to one, and that's the top 10 on the board. That's 40 to one and above in terms of the betting board. I, I, the first thing I did this morning was bet Tom Hoagie at 35 to one. Now he's 33 to one, but I just if this is whatever, I've just been betting this idiot all year. He keeps super high finishes, no wins. If he's going to get one, it's got to be like here or the Wyndham. Like that's really it for him. Maybe he can get it done in Memphis. I don't know, but. Now, 35 to one for a guy who, when you look at driving's important, but it's not the end all be all, just don't get wet. Then it comes down to approaches and putting that I know he can do. So why not? And I, I really want to bet Batia as well, but I haven't got there yet. 
Okay, so two thoughts about the under 40 to one. Um, I'm curious, are the rest of your card going to be like the shot makers or the bombers? That wasn't a thought. That was a new thought, just as Pat mentions Hoagie. If I'll say this one first. Love this Clanton kid. Seems like the bell of the ball. His off the tee will crush here. That makes total sense. I could never bet him at the same number as Bacha. Like, if I'm making a move here, it's Bacha at 28 to 1, who in my who I don't think it's crazy to say, like, obviously you're betting it today and for this weekend, but I mean, like, he might actually be the most accomplished player in this field in like a very well, like Burns has a ton of wins. But um like over the he past might be, year. Yeah, like he might be pound for pound the best player in this field in like the next six months. All that being said, if this event was a week ago, I think I'd be running to that Finau 11 at Rivers. And I am of the belief that, you know, as you try to convince yourself of anything, you could literally take whatever happened last week and burn it if you do not like the result for a player. They got caught in a wave. They got caught in a bunker. Shit just goes sideways so quick at an open championship that Feinberg, the apologist for so many guys, will easily be an apologist for someone he wants to potentially bet this week who played horrifically a week ago. I don't make my own models. I use yours. Okay? I use yours. I see what yours say. If I was making models... I probably wouldn't even put last week's event in it because it's just such a, I don't know. I like, it has no bearing. Like when you're doing the St. Jude in a couple of weeks, what the fuck does what happened at the open have to do with that? Um, that's just a thought of mine. So if this was a week ago, he now might be like seven to one. I don't know if he would have opened it seven but i i can most definitely see it just based on the popularity that he had last week and just he had a fine thursday at the open he has had a, like a lot of people a very very poor friday at the open same as the gala who's in the i think we just kind of forgot about the gala being in this field it doesn't seem like anyone wants any piece of him right now like he'll pay for the misses this week so it's a concern right i mean just like literally going back to the day one of the season skylar hoke line that um Thigala and Spieth might share like many similar qualities in terms of like courses you should maybe want to play them at this moment in Thigala like you're going to pay for the misses here right and that's not where you kind of maybe it's not where you look to play them but again I don't think the number is unfair relative to the to the field but I'd rather bet Bocci. I'd rather bet Bocci at twenty eight. Like so, if I had to, it's almost where my head is. I've almost looked through him because if I had to make the choice, I would take the bigger number at a player I probably feel just as comfortable with. And you can make be make a case. There's more underlying things on this course that might even work better. Keith Mitchell was the other one that I was kind of given a look at, but like guy hasn't chipped or putted in a year, but the ball striking is still amazing. But when I went back and looked at it, he's played this event four years. He's come T5 each of his past two times being here. And he's gained over four strokes putting three of the four years. He just can't hit approaches here. It's really bizarre. I This Keith Mitchell, it's been like a whole thing all year on this like corner of the internet that we live in. Um, as someone that's never played it, that just like this, like I just don't trust the guy. I, I'm not jumping in. Mm -hmm. I don't even have my own losers here to back, but I'll find them. He missed the cut at the Barracuda. I don't, I don't, I'm not betting Keith Mitchell. I see a high number of 33. I'd eat two points and, and bet Baccia. All right, yeah. Uh, I'm probably going to end up on Akshay as well, and then I, I bet Hoagie at 35. That 40 to 100 range, the only guy that I bet was Ekrot at 80 to 1, and I took the placings on it. Notice that. Didn't move on it, but noticed it. Uh, thought it, it felt nice. Um... Shotmaker, bomber, shotmaker, bomber. 
go back and forth. There's a few guys in here though, Pat, that that really do have my attention. Um might need to load up some like actual stats though, so I could defend it when you tell me I'm insane. Like, I I think that there's certain ways that you can play this. Obviously, we saw Wolf get a breakout win here. I think he was like 200 to one the year that he ended up winning, and we've seen a lot of like long shots end up winning uh, this tournament. Triple digits for Hodges, triple digits for Wolf, triple digits for Thompson. I think we just remember that Finau year of him being one of the prohibitive favorites, and he ended up winning back-to-back weeks. He won this and the Rocket Mortgage. He was in a really hot run at the time. But this is a great outsider's course if you want to go down the board. See, my problem is I can never see outsiders clearly, and I, I'm like eating at the Cheesecake Factory, like some mid-restaurant. You know, you, you leave satisfied, but you could have always have gone somewhere better. And um, on that note... No Americans I'm about to mention. Two Canadians. Hadwin and Pendrith at 50 to 1 have my attention. Emiliano Grio, he does like to give warning signs. I don't know if we've gotten a full warning sign that he's feeling it, but um, I think we might be on the verge of getting some good Grio. So those are three guys right in the middle of the pack. Uh, that do have a bit of my attention. The Canadians more so than Grio. Um, Cause like Grio, like to bet Grio to win, I need to see like a harder, maybe spiking arrow. Um, and he'll give it to us before he wins. If he actually plans on winning again, anytime soon. So it actually is those two Canadians right in the middle. One's a bomber. One's a shot maker. Um, maybe, you know, it's just a, it's a lot of the same things with Hoagie, just a worse player we had one. I like the Grio call. He's come top 10 three of the four years that they've played here. Obviously, he had a he was running pretty decently at the Open until he wasn't, ended up making the cut, missed the cut at the Scottish, but he had gained in seven straight on approach before that. Like, his putter is non-existent again, which I think is probably the biggest issue right now. Not to say that he can't flip it around and win this tournament, but when we've seen the signs from him before, he was usually running like somewhat of a hot putter for him coming into things. Just, he's been a disaster and it's a lot like, Sven- like I like Svensson the best of the Canadians, just because I know that his approach game is going to be pretty dialed in. And we always like him. At P- I, I like guys here that we always like a PGA national. I think that there is some sort of temperament issue when you have that much water surrounding you that some guys can deal with it. Some can't when you're coming down the stretch, even someone like Michael Thompson had won uh, the Honda classic previous to winning at the 3M. So that would just be a crossover I have in my mind. And one of the reasons that I bet on Ekro, that his ball striking continues to be really good. He can't chip or putt anymore, but he did just win the Cognizant. Okay, here's the problem with your Honda comp, Pat, is like I have already hit the 50s and I haven't found the cheeky European on this board other than Harry Hall. There's not like this isn't a tournament where the Euros show up like the Euros show up to PGA National because I mean, a lot of the time it was the first tournament that a lot of the internationals play, but a lot of them just live in Florida. So they go play it. Yep. Fair, fair enough. And then you're right. It's the easy dot to start that swing for the guys who want to fly over. But you said Honda. I started looking for cheeky Euros. Uh, I told you there's a player I'm going to ask you about. And I am confident the way this guy is striking the ball right now, totally lovely at the moment. He's a player that you do mention sometimes more of like in a joke form, but I think behind the jokes, you mean it either miss cuts or plays well. And let me finish for a second, because if this player's name was like Michael Lumberson from the SEC, he'd be, he'd be with Tom Hoagie this week. But his name is Chan Kim, and you can get him at 66 to 1. Is that enough? I don't know. He's hitting it beautifully. I know. He legitimately cannot putt. You got to putt to win a bet. You got to putt to win this tournament in particular, too. I mean, unless you go full Scotty on everyone, and then like you don't really have to putt. But you're going to have to probably gain at least two to four strokes putting. And just uh, I'll pull up the Fantasy National card for 4chan here. And see what he's got rolling. Like he's yeah, he's he's been competing in a lot of these subfield events. Like he had a twelfth, the John Deere, he was ten at the ISIS. 
Uh, he was top 30 last week. And yeah, across the board, he actually putted well at the John Deere and in Kentucky. But yeah, Tita Green, he's been absolutely lights out. And did he play well? Yeah, he, he played fairly. He actually putted really well earlier this season at PGA National, but did not drive the ball particularly well. But yeah, Tita Green, like him and Rico Hoy are two guys that I think you need to look at. Even Mark Messier at 66 to 1. Like he should have won that tournament yesterday. But everything, like when I'm looking at this betting board right now, and everyone in this range, the 60, like the 50s, 66, 75s, whoever it might be, like based on the some of the guys that we've seen pop up here and win, like isn't Thor Bjornsson like an auto bet? I mean, I won't need to be won't take much to talk me into like betting you know, the cool young hot toddy. Um I guess so. I, I, a version of me would have already made that bet. So maybe I'm just so rattled right now in some respects because yeah i like i don't know he's not playing well, i guess that's also really not fair i mean he came second at the john deere like, yeah. three weeks ago it's so funny because like the set like when someone wins by that big sometimes the second place doesn't even register especially when you like maybe stop even watching how a tournament finishes um yeah did he play here last year by chance, or that's a dumb question? Yeah. No, he did play the Rocket twice. And, yeah. Mm, I'm looking at it. I wasn't in a rush to bet it. Wasn't in a rush to bet it like I was, you know, Ludwig a year ago, where I think he went around here with Luke Donald and sliced every fairway 320 <laughs> dead center. And that morning, I'm like, you guys, anyone who thinks he's not going to that Ryder Cup team, has no idea what Luke Donald just experienced. Other than that, I, I don't really have much. Like, Rico, can I go back to the well with him three weeks in a row when he had a legitimate chance to win each of the past two weeks? Like, it seems like a perfect guy to go to. Him and Spawn. Like, Spawn was very much in the mix until, like, midway through the third round at the CUDA again, and then just the wheels fell off a little bit. But he's been playing some really good golf, too. He's 90 to Yeah. Win. Decent, clean golf. For for him, I actually am looking at your Ek route shout. That one doesn't seem horrible. You know, like you mentioned, in some ways, you know, Jake Knapp, ninety uh, to one. I, I worry that this isn't a full send driver course. It is if you're hitting it directly down the middle. I could just see him having some water issues. But I guess it wasn't a problem for him at PGA National. Like he went driver most of the time and drove it well. I think he came in fourth a week after winning in Mexico. 90 100 does seem like if you're having a hard time picking your list of goobers he might be just worth throwing on here he's not playing yeah like by my numbers very very short term the best guys from like 90 to 1 and above let's call it 100 to 1 and above and i went through this on the research show but we have the updated data now uh spawn pearson cootie kevin Yu. Hayden Springer, Carson Young, Joel Damon. It's kind of it in terms of the top. David Skins is like, you know, inside the top 30 of the power rankings, and he's 200 to 1. Uh, Roger Sloan, but that's off very limited data. Yeah, that's, that's basically it right now. Oh, man. Wow. I'm in the 400s by the time I, I, I see uh addc's name what a tough year he's had i know i thought he was going to be good like the way that we're talking about clanton and thor bjornson and shipley i mean we should probably bring up shipley as well and uh, the, i mean i didn't know who mac messenger was uh but apparently he's I, a I can't bet anyone who's pre like putt pull trigger routine like at least billy like it's the worst pre putt it's like of a 16 handicap like at least billy horschel i don't it, it seems like way more Okay, I could see why a professional would just step in and fire. What that that shoulder shimmy? I'll now I'll never lay a cent on this guy. I don't think. <laughs> I the the Billy thing really seems to trigger people, but once he commits to it, like he he doesn't pull a Xander or a Keegan or a Harmon. Like once he's over the ball, he hits it. It just he yes. has to like sneak up on it and surprise it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once he gets that putter behind, it just it it, it releases. 
I mean, this could be a good Max Gracerman course. Like, he's another one who's just been playing some pretty good golf as of late. There's just a lot of guys. Andrew Novak is another one who just kind of consistently lingers. Should we be looking at Thirsty Lawrence? In theory, without yesterday, it's funny to think without playing well in the biggest stage on earth, you might have been more inclined to back him as like a total welcome to America, Thirsty. I support you over there. I'm going to back you here at a lower tier field event. But yesterday and the weekend, like I could see why you'd give pause, but kind of checks a lot of boxes, Pat. Like, it's funny to think what his odds would have been without if he just, I don't know, had a middling sort of performance. You probably would have been really excited to bet him at 90 to one or something, right? Yeah, I I think that I would. I mean, I I bet him at... Much weaker fields at much higher, lower numbers uh, throughout the course of the year over on the DP World Tour. So I don't know what to do with them. Like, I'm having a lot of, I, I don't want to just bet people to bet them on a Monday morning. I have the guys that I kind of like. I'm going to bet Batia at 28. But yeah, I'll have my three guys that I bet, throw Spawn on there at 90. So we got four. Uh, I, th- I think that's good enough for, for a start. I'll have the update in the newsletter and I'll do the show with Tambo, see if he can sell me on anyone else. And I'll continue to dig in throughout the course of the week. But that's kind of where I want to be right now, I think. thing is are you in this mind of the guys because i like i'm surprised what you haven't i believe said yet or maybe you didn't i missed it because as we know sometimes i'm not the best listener is like the guys at 110 are the same as the guys at 50 i don't believe that i don't feel that as much this week there does uh, I mean, that's not necessarily true. Like, you have Taylor Moore and J.J. Spawn and Putnam. Like, are they really that dissimilar than Grio? Not really. Oh, Grio, Kitayama, Pendrith. Like, what? why is J.J. Spawn that dissimilar to Pendrith? Why is Taylor I mean, Moore you're asking top me 20s about... in two majors this year? You're asking me, like, you're using the guy that might be my only loser in this field. Like, as the case study, I, I can't really defend it. All right, well, let's even throw a Grio, because Grio's been around for ages. Like, I don't know, Doug Gim is 75 to 1. Is he that dissimilar than any of the guys I just mentioned? I guess you pay a... Like, I don't know what the right word is, but I don't trust Doug Gim. And that's not to say I should trust Pendrith or Hadwin or, or Grio or or Kitayama, but I, in golf betting, like if you're over 50, once you're over 50 to one, I'll swallow 20 points just because I trust you. Okay, so here's the better example. Taylor Moore, and I'm not saying to bet Taylor Moore. I'm not betting Taylor Moore, but he's 110 to one. Sam Stevens is 55 to one. I don't really have a counter there. Uh, I could see how Stevens could get along lovely this week on this course, but we're asking to win. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's like a college betting board. There's so many names on a full slate of like an NCAA Saturday. You're going to find like something. I don't have a fight, but I just feel like I, I know I'm going to get sucked into this goddamn middle and I should probably just bet Fino and Baccia. Don't even bet Fina. It's bet Batia and Hoagie. Anyway, quick picks. I'm betting Hadwin. Maybe I should bet Hoagie. But... Quick picks for the 3M. I am betting Akshay at 28, Hoagie at 35, Ekrot at 80 with five places, and JJ Spawn at 100 to 1, I see right now, with five places as well. Those will be my four going into it, and I'm going to take Batia as my one and done. For me, um, Team Canada. Like, I'm betting on Pendrith. I'm betting on Pendrith. I'm betting on Hadwin. I like Grio. I like Baccia. I, you may have sold me on Ekrot. I mean, the, the Ekrot thing is more of a hunch in how well he's been striking the ball, but he's another guy. I love how he strikes it. Yeah. I love how he strikes it. I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, I actually thought he'd play quite well last week i don't even care that it you know at times can go to shit 
I agree. 80, 80 to one on Ekro versus these guys. I like it. Um, you, I mean, you said that you, you, you shouted Ekro before I even think you made your PGA Nat comp. Yes. I mean, that was a part of it of why I ended up betting him, but I just like the way that he's, playing. I didn't want, did you do a research show? I mean, I should know these things. I did. It's on Mayo media network right now. Subscribe to Mayo media network. And we had the major and then the CUDA. There was like, no, you know, and then, Hey, the big news of yesterday, there was content needs were satisfied. I, I wasn't hunting, wasn't hunting the three M research yeah. like I normally am late on, late on a Sunday. And listen, there's there's people who uh, I'm just looking at it right now, looking at the downloads, and you know, people are still interested. Not quite as interested as they were in the Open Championship, but those who like, the, there are certain people that really like the research show to get them kicked off for the week. And I really like doing it because it gives me a sense of what's going on for the week and what I want to look for, whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong. Just trying to look at the course, figure out the holes, what's going to be important. And I just, you know, it's I, I think it's a part of people's routine right now. I know it's a part of my routine. That's why I made it into a show. And selfishly, I love doing a show with someone who's already done a research show. And in the past, you had already like submitted an article. It's crazy. Yeah, my, my fingers uh, got broken. I don't know if I can. I, although I put it in the, I write like a mini column in the newsletter. You do. Completely free, by the way. You can sub to that down in the description. I got a fun week this week, by the way. So uh, tomorrow I got Meanie for football. And then I got Tambo in studio for 3M, all the final picks like that. And then I have Marenzi for Olympic betting on Wednesday or on Thursday. I have another show with Meanie coming out and I'm recording tonight. I don't know when it's going to come out, but we're recording a cuss corner with me cussing Cam. That's good shit. That's that's good. That's top of the shelf. Um, and now guess what? Like previous, I just watched your AFC West preview because that's just where my heart is. But now that the Open's over, I'm going to go back and watch all of them. Like, I'm going to – football is, like, starting for me now. I mean that. Like, football starts for me this morning in some way. Of Major note. Major season's over. Uh, of note, just because every time that we do one of these shows and we have, like, iffy guys, whether they're going to play or whether they're not, the moment that I, like, export the show and go to upload it, someone ends up – withdrawing it never happens while we're recording the show so i'm just trying to keep up to date on that to see if anything is happening the only wd so far is mark hubbard with a back injury that's how james <laughs> ended up getting into the field and i couldn't do that yesterday because my kids were asleep upstairs and i didn't want to wake them up when i was recording the show i have no doubt someone will withdraw the moment we say goodbye yeah, so uh, pay attention to the notes in the comment section uh, if it happens like within the hour between us posting and the show or us filming and the show being released. If anyone withdraws in that time period, I'll have it in there. But I'll have all the updates on Monday evening in that free newsletter. So go check that out. All right, Jeff, you got Odds Checker this week with Andy? Odds Checker with Andy, 3M open, should be up tomorrow morning. Should have my betting card settled by then. All right, cool. Follow me at the PME, Instagram, X, wherever you want to do that. FantasyNational.com slash Mayo to get 20% off. Code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy will get you a deposit bonus of up to 250 bucks. And, you know, there's if there's going to be hires and lowers, we can play for props this week. I Not only did I get cleaned out in betting, I got cleaned out on Underdog as well in terms of trying to yeah. target the right ways. It just did, you didn't are... You did actually win something last week, which I told you on the Cut Sweat Show or before the fact. But you had told me last week that you were lowering a bit of DK exposure because you bought a new Scotty Cameron. Your lineups would have gotten eviscerated. That's true. So, <laughs> so there it is. You came out with something, and you're going to have more uh, par saves. Yeah, I, I ended up. Uh, I ended up taking half my DraftKings entries that I would know. I, I have my DraftKings entries by what I would normally play and bought a Scotty Cameron instead. Good investment, I think. Putting well already. That, plus EV, because you'd have been like, I, I mean, I kind of know what happened to the rest of your lineups, and I assume the other half would have gone just as bad. I had one lineup that was awesome if it just had Fina in it. It ended up like cashing and making money. It just, it would have been so good if it was like anyone but Fina. Live and learn. And it happens. Anyway, I'm Pat Mayo at the PME Newsletter, Underdog, Fantasy National, all that fun stuff. Go check it all out right now. All right? Let's have some fun this week. Let's win. And I'll see you next time. Experience. It's
experience!